Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you ever so much for joining me today uh, on this webinar, all about sort of hybrid meetings, the future of meetings, and ultimately all about Microsoft Teams rooms. Uh, my name is Barry Coombs. For those that don't know me, I am Chief Technologist here at Computer World. I'm a big Microsoft 365 uh, fan. I work directly with lots of our customers and with the Modern Workspace team here at Computer World to help organizations transform the way that they're working with technologies associated with Microsoft 365. We've got um, a relatively short webinar today where we're going to dig into everything around Microsoft Teams rooms, the reasons why people are looking at it, uh, what a Teams room is, what are the components, how is it licensed, what you should consider when designing your Microsoft Teams room. And also at the end, uh, we have uh, the ability for you to um, opt to have a workshop with us so we can help design what the Teams rooms would look like inside your organization. During uh, the whole uh, webinar, please feel free to use the uh, chat functionality to ask any questions. Uh, it reminds me that there's someone there, so really do appreciate the interaction. Megan is also on the webinar that will be getting those messages through to me, and I'm happy to answer your questions. So please don't feel free that this is a, a sit and listen and watch, uh, watch me present. I'm really keen to make sure I'm answering your specific questions. No question is a silly question. If you're thinking something, someone else probably is, so please make sure uh, you ask about it. So first of all, wanted to start talking about the reason for change. Why are we now looking at Microsoft uh, Teams rooms? Why are we looking at this technology? Um, and for many of you, I think uh, the, the, the journey we've been on for the last, what is almost two and a half years now, has radically changed the way that we work. Um, with many of our uh, employees being uh, sent home in the last two years, Microsoft Teams and related technologies such as Zoom have become the default way that we we have communicated and worked during that period. But we're now in this strange time where we're getting back to um, the new normal, should we say? I think that's another overused uh, statement. But we're getting back to trying to find out how we're going to work moving forward. Uh, some people will be going back to the office. Some people are trying their hardest to stay at home. And I think for most organizations, flexible working, being at home or in the office or indeed on the road, is really going to be what the new business life looks like. The challenge is whilst we as organizations and people have got very used to video conferencing being a standard for uh, meeting with people with collaborating, when people come back into our offices, unless we've invested in technology over the last two and a half years, the meeting rooms, the boardrooms can kind of look a little bit more like they have done for many years, many hundreds of years. The picture on the left here is, is typically what lots of meeting rooms look like. OK, you might have a projector or a screen on the end wall, but really the functionality and what is inside there is very rarely changed in all that time. And we're in this stage where no longer can you request that everybody must come into a meeting with ease. There will be people that wish to join remotely. And the real challenge that we've got to have is with hybrid meetings, we've got to have equality for people, irrespective of whether they're home or in the office. Now, what I've seen over the past few months as people have been getting back to hybrid working is people have returned back to the office, they've gone to the office for a meeting, but the people that are joined remotely and the people that are joined in the office are almost having two separate meetings. Those that are joining remotely are able to hear each other well, they're able to see each other well, they're able to communicate, but they're not able to really see or hear what's going on well in the office. And those that are in the meeting room aren't really seeing the people that are remote as equal citizens, equal people in that meeting. So we really need to kind of spin this on this head and make sure that no matter where somebody is, wherever they're joining the meeting, they're able to take part. They feel like they're part of the meeting. They don't feel that they're unequal in any way, shape or form. And that's really where the concept from Microsoft's perspective with Microsoft Teams room is more like the room on the right here. We've got an equal footing. We've got people on an eye to eye level to be able to collaborate. We have multiple screens in the example here. You might be able to use your Microsoft Surface at home to draw on a whiteboard and use the screen that is in front of you to do that as well. So now is the time to change. Now is the time to be looking at this. And luckily with Microsoft Teams rooms, this is easier than it ever has been before. Doing video conferencing for many years meant proprietary technologies, complicated technologies. Luckily now the technology that is available is a lot more accessible and a lot more easier to implement. 
So we're going to take a look at that technology that is specifically Microsoft Teams Rooms. I'd be interested to hear in the chat if anybody has had any specific challenges with uh, the hybrid meetings or hybrid uh, working, or indeed if you're looking at this technology and have specific questions around the Microsoft Teams Rooms that you're looking at. So please feel free to post down uh, in the chat. So what is a Microsoft Teams room? A Microsoft Teams room is a solution that is uh, the software from Microsoft that is uh, part of Microsoft Teams. It is administered through the Microsoft Teams admin console with hardware that is generally uh, available as a package bundle from a variety of different audiovisual manufacturers, the likes of Yealink, Poly, um, uh, Crestron and, and others. You will require a license for all your Microsoft Teams rooms, and we'll come back to that in a moment. And there's several different components, hardware components that make it up. But effectively, it should be quick, simple and easy for your colleagues, your employees to join the Teams room meeting, irrespective of where they are. If they're at home, they just simply join a Teams meeting. If they're in a large meeting room, it's a tap of a button. If they're in a small meeting room, it's a tap of the button. It is the same no matter where you are. So let's have a look at some of the components that make up a Microsoft Teams room. The first point we've got is a touchscreen console that is typically on the desk in front of you when you're in the meeting room. It's quite important that that is available on the meeting room table because from there, and we'll have a look at this, you can control many aspects to the meeting. We need some element of compute, and that can either be running Windows or running Android, and we'll come to that in a moment. And that will run the Microsoft Teams Room application that is natively running in that room, so you can quickly and easily go onto it. It doesn't run Windows in desktop mode where you have to open up Teams or log in or anything like that. It runs a dedicated Microsoft Teams Room application. You need the right collection of peripherals for your room. So depending on the size, and we'll go through this, you can need a camera, microphone, speakers, screens, two screens maybe. And you may also want to have a HDMI input to allow people to simply plug in their laptops and share it on the Microsoft Teams room. That can be particularly useful with external people joining the meeting where they might not have Teams installed on their laptop or something like that. So these are the components that make up a Microsoft Teams room. What you also, um, what you will get or what your users will see is on the small screen, on the small tablet that is on there, they will see the left hand screen when they walk into a Microsoft Teams room. So as we can see on the right hand side, we've got a couple of buttons. We've got Meet Now, which you have, if you haven't booked a Microsoft Teams meeting in the room, you can simply click that and then dial in whoever you want to be in your meeting. We have a dial pad, so you can simply make a telephone call if you're configured with Microsoft Teams phone system. And you can join your meetings on the left hand side. Now, generally, um, and it's available with public preview at the moment, of course, you can join Microsoft Teams meetings, but you're also able to join, I believe it is uh, Zoom, WebEx and BlueJeans uh, meetings from here as well. And they will just show up, as you can see on the left hand image, there's a very small Teams icon next to two of those meetings. It will show the Zoom icon or WebEx icon, uh, icon with there as well. So on the left hand side, when you go into the room, that's what you get. You're going to click join. And then the image on the right hand side that is just behind me here will be what you then see when you're in the meeting. You see the name of your meeting at the top there. You see the participants that are in the meeting. You see the ability to add someone into the meeting, so it will call them on Teams. You've got a number of controls down the bottom to turn the camera on and off, to mute, to share some content, to turn the volume up and down. And importantly, you can click on people in the meeting to be able to mute them, to be able to uh, focus on them. And you have a number of different view modes as well. So importantly, this isn't overcomplicated. It's nice and simple uh, for people to be able to use inside the room. Lots of the meeting room technologies I've used in the past require an instruction book inside the room to be able to use it effectively. This isn't like that. This is like an extension of Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft um, Teams rooms, um, Microsoft Teams Rooms uh, features that uh, you get inside the room effectively it is going to be just like a Microsoft Teams meeting. One feature that is currently in public preview is the front row feature, which is just behind me here. So actually this is what is showing down the bottom. Now importantly, what this is looking to do is make sure that the content being shared 
the people in the meeting and the chat and reactions that are going on all are visible easily to people in the meeting room. And importantly, the people that are joining remotely should be near eye level with you in the room. And if you've got a big enough screen, they'll also be look a lot more like human size as well. And this is all for that ability to make sure everybody's included as part of the meeting. I'm sure you've been in those meetings where you're kind of talking away and you forget that someone sat in on the, the conference call at the other end of it or, or on the very small conference screen. This is all about the equality, making sure everyone feels included. We've already looked at the one touch uh, join. You've got the Cortana voice assistant, so you don't even need to touch the panel anymore. You can uh, call out Cortana to do certain actions. We've got proximity join, which will use Bluetooth low energy in your laptop device to identify which room that you're in. It will auto mute your speakers and microphone if you're joining from your laptop in the room. And we've got things like transcription and things like that as well. So we've got an ever growing feature set available in Microsoft Teams room, but importantly, it's all there for a purpose. This isn't something that is overloaded with features. So you're trying to juggle too many things inside your meeting. So you do need to license your Microsoft uh, Teams rooms included in both licenses that are available standard or premium are the Microsoft uh, Teams element, the phone system, audio conferencing, which is becoming free, so you won't need that specifically anymore. Microsoft Intune to be able to manage it and Azure Active Directory P1. The main difference between standard and premium is premium is available as a managed service, so you're paying nearly three times or over three times the amount for it and effectively a, uh, a service that Microsoft will proactively manage that meeting room for you, as well as giving you some intelligence. I think the ability to do people counting inside the meeting rooms and things like that is also available in that license. Um, every single one of my customers so far has just bought the standard license. They haven't felt the need to go for the premium. Now, I think I've seen a few uh, comments come in on chat. I don't know, Megan, if you want to read them out or read them on the screen. Yeah, so uh, no questions, <clears throat> but uh, people have made some comments. So Mark said that Teams live events are difficult to join with Microsoft Teams room because you can't just join them um, like you would a normal meeting. You have to um, join them in another way. So it'd be great if you could just join from the web link. So hopefully that's something that Microsoft will improve upon. Um, and the other one was um, another Mark um, saying that uh, they've it, they've been in situations where they've experienced participants at home not getting the same experience as those in the office. So um, inclusivity is the word that uh, Mark thinks we need to push upon. Definitely, I completely agree with those. I think the first thing on the events, Microsoft Live events are a bit of a funny thing, in my opinion. They have quite advanced technology in the way that they can be used with SDI cameras and things like that. However, the original reason that they were put out there was for the webinar style functionality. Now, obviously, we've got webinars as we're on now. I don't think they're, perf uh, they're perfect by any means, but also some of that functionality is now also available in standard um, Teams uh, meetings as well, where you can pre-select whether people can turn their cameras on, whether they can chat. So I would probably just say to reflect on whether Microsoft Live events are the right thing or whether one of the webinar or meeting technologies with the right option select would work for you. If live events are there, then 100% let's hope that Microsoft are going to build them out some more. I would hope to see it Microsoft Build or Microsoft Ignite are seeing some further um, implementation of the features into the webinar feature and maybe events really become more of a specialised um, uh, element. But definitely on the second point all around uh, inclusivity, it, it, we've got to try and work as hard as possible. And I think this is twofold. This is the technology, but it's also as how we act as people inside the meetings. We need to remember there are people on the other side of the screen. We need to kind of stop and think, how are we including those people inside our meetings? And I don't think this is just for the meeting rooms. I think in the hybrid working world, we need to consider this in our everyday working. I think when we were all at home, we were quite used to jumping on a quick Teams meeting together or giving someone a call. Nobody hopefully really missed out on anything. If you're not going into the office regularly, or maybe you've been employed as a remote employee because your organization has done that, how are you going to make sure they're not missing out on the conversations that are happening inside the office? 
the bad news is I can't give you an easy answer to this. This is something that we all need to work towards. We all need to strive to achieve. And we also all need to think about how we as an organization are going to solve these problems. The technology can then, of course, help with Teams, with Yammer, with Teams meetings and things like that. So definitely um, it's something that we all need to work towards. And hopefully with the right meeting room technology, we can take that a stage further. So the next thing that I would advise, if you're looking at Microsoft Teams rooms or Teams room technology, I'd have a sort of a run around your meeting rooms, have a think about what you need, and I'd recommend that you come up with a set of meeting room personas. This is looking at the meeting rooms and looking about what you're trying to achieve to them. So in here, we've got some examples given to us by Polly. So we've got a focus room. In my mind, this is kind of a one, maybe two person uh, room. It could be a kind of um, a work booth as well that we're starting to see. In the corner of the office, it's a sound insulated booth that you run to to do some calls. That is the smallest room. We've then got the small room that is kind of going up to maybe four, maybe six people. Um, ideal for kind of in department meeting rooms and things like that going up to the medium and large rooms from there. And then beyond large, we have custom rooms. So if you have rooms where the whole company gets together, that's where we'll need to custom design a meeting room solution for your room. But largely up to the large meeting room, we can choose something off the shelf that should meet our needs. But that isn't where it ends. It isn't just about the size of the room. It's about a number of other things. And this is where I see a lot of organizations go wrong when they start looking at Microsoft Teams room. So the first thing is consider the room function. Is it mainly used for training? Is it used for collaboration, as in you're up on your feet and you're wanting to go on a whiteboard? Is it for formal meetings, more like a board meeting where you're sat down? If it is going to be used for training, consider where the main person that is presenting is going to be. If I'm delivering training, I like to be stood up at the front of the room, addressing the people inside the room. Now, if someone has put the camera on the wall below a screen, unfortunately, all the people that are remote going to get is a lovely picture of my back or worse. Um, so you want to consider the camera placement if it is going to be used for training to make sure that the presenter is full focus. Maybe the camera needs to be over to the side or the back of the room. Maybe you need to look at your microphone and speaker placement. For collaboration, you'll want to make sure that you have room at the front of the room where you can grab a pen with a touch screen and use the Microsoft whiteboard inside the meeting room, which I can talk about if anyone wants to know how to do that, um, to collaborate with people on it. There's no point having your board from table right up against the front and not having a touch screen. We need to have that set up as a collaboration space. Formal meetings are more traditional. We could put a very simple Microsoft Teams room solution underneath the screen. Maybe move the boardroom table or the meeting room table closer to that screen to try and have that inclusive uh, inclusivity. So someone has said, can I touch upon uh, the whiteboard? Um, Megan, if I forget to do that when I get to the touch screen slide, let me know. But I'll talk about how we can get that working uh, as well. Um, so the next thing, and this is where it goes uh, even more wrong, is consider the room you're putting it into. You could spend a lot of money on a Microsoft Teams room solution, but then the room itself has got glass walls, it has got stone floors, and you're going to get echo, you're going to get reverberation. You've got light coming in from windows behind you. You do need to make sure that you do consider the space. Where possible, make sure you've got a carpet. Make sure you've got some form of sound deadening on the floor, on the walls. There's these fantastic kind of slatted wood sound panels that you can put up now that look very modern, that really do kind of give you that warmth for sound and stop the echo as well. So if you are looking at this, do just consider the room because you will need to make sure that you are um, including that in your options when refreshing your meeting rooms. So we've got sound absorption, we've got uh, lightning, uh, lighting, hopefully no lightning, um, and then we have the layout. So very much down the bottom, you need to consider where the screens are located, where the cameras are located. You're probably going to get rid of that meeting room table, that uh, chair that sits at the end. So the purple image behind, we can see the screen and the camera on front of it there. We can see the angle of view. If someone sat with their back right next against the screen, the remote person is just going to see the back of someone. It really excludes them from the meeting, doesn't make them feel part of it. 
Um, we've got the speakers and the microphone layout. So the little image there behind me shows a dual microphone layout, one from the front of the room, but because it's quite a long table, we've got a second microphone at the end of the table here to make sure everybody in this meeting room can be heard. So uh, I'll just turn the overlay off there so you can see that. The bottom right image there, you can see the two microphones that are in layout in that room. So there are a number of things that you do need to be considering there with your meeting rooms other than just the technology itself. I actually have a question, uh, Barry. Um, one of our clients recently has implemented Teams Rooms, and one of the big things that they were discussing when that they were implementing them is the position of the table in that meeting room for the inclusivity. So in the pictures there, there's obviously a gap between the screen and where the table begins. Um, they were very pro putting the table right up against the screen to make it feel like that person was also sat around the table. Is that something that people should consider or do you have any sort of opinion on that? No, I completely agree. And I think it comes very much to what could be walking in front of the camera or sat in front of the camera as much as anything. If you do leave a gap there and people can walk out around the front of it, you might have to with your room layout. But equally, at the start of the meeting, when people are arriving, the camera, it, all people might be seeing and um, you might be looking at people's asses. I can't think of a better way of putting it, to be honest with you. Um, whereas being able to have the meeting room table closer to the camera would stop that happening. As you say, it would bring the remote people closer. It also means the screen is closer to the people that are in the meeting room. So they're much more likely to be at eye level between the remote participants and the people inside the room. So whatever you can do to it, promote that inclusivity and promote the screen, the screen should be as big as possible because a smaller screen is just going to mean you're either going to struggle to see the content or the remote people. Or really, that's why in a, a larger room, we look to go for a dual, scre uh, dual screen functionality, where at least we can have the people on one on the content or the other. But with the future technologies that are coming, the people will be able to spread across all uh, both of the screens at the bottom as well. So um, yes, lots of good considerations there and just as important as the technology itself in terms of what we're thinking about. So um, Windows versus uh, Android, and I, I did cheat a bit here, as you can see with the bullet points. So you have two choices. So I'm really talking to the technologists in the room now. Uh, for those of you that are more champions, um, then this is something to be talking about with your IT team. So first of all, if I just move over, there is a QR code on screen. Uh, get your phones out, hold it up to the screen, and hopefully it takes you to a Microsoft uh, website that will show you the difference between the Windows and the Android-based team room solutions. Now these solutions, uh, they're both fully supported by Microsoft. The Windows solutions have been around for a lot longer. They were supported with Skype and have been updated since. The Android solutions are the more modern solutions, the newer solutions. Now up until recently, what that did mean is the Windows-based solutions were fully featured, had all the features and got the features first, and the Android solutions were a little bit behind, certainly on the ability for things like HDMI ingest, the ability to join uh, Zoom meetings and things like that. Now, as you can see with the Windows-based solution at the top, this is a poly uh, small to medium uh, room solution. There is the tablet, which is called the G40T. There is the Poly Studio USB camera, and there is a little PC by Dell or Lenovo that would sit behind the TV. That will run Windows. You shouldn't manage it like a Windows device. Treat it like an appliance. Don't be able to, um, don't uh, look at um, updating it and putting patch management on it and being too aggressive with your antivirus. Treat it as an appliance. Um, there's a few people saying they can't scan the QR code. I've moved over, so hopefully, actually what I'm gonna do, let me just choose the other layout and I'll be off the screen then so you can then um, uh, scan the QR code. Um, so that is the Windows based unit. Now the Android based unit, as I say, they're more modern, they were lacking features, but as you will see by looking at the website that hopefully that you're all going to, you will be able to see now that the Android units are a lot more feature parity with the Windows units now. And the main benefit is there is a single unit. So as we can see the bottom there, and I think that's a Poly X50, so that's suitable for a medium sized meeting room. Um, it is all built into there. It runs Android, so you are treating it like an appliance. You manage it completely from the Teams admin console. So as I sit here today, 
generally we're advising more customers now to go for that Android solution. There's a few requirements that would still need, mean you need a Windows requirement, but ultimately just reach out to me. So it's Barry C at computerworld.co.uk or Anthony, Megan, John, any, anybody from Computer World, and we can go through your requirements and make sure that we advise you whether Windows or Android would be right. And we'd look to match that back to the personas that we mentioned a minute ago. So we go through the personas that you've created our small collaboration room, a large uh, meeting room, and we would go actually in that room because of these features, we'd recommend an Android or a Windows based solution. So if we have a look at an example range, so uh, Computer World partner with a number of providers by Microsoft Teams rooms. Uh, we sell by far more poly units than anything else. There's a few reasons uh, around that. It's around functionality, it's around support, it's around the quality of the units we found. There are cheaper options available if uh, budget is constrained, um, but be mindful of some of the cheaper units, maybe not having the same quality of features as the more expensive solutions, but we can help sort of direct you in the right way. So on the top row here, we have the Windows solutions and on the bottom row there, uh, we've got the Android based solutions. So we're starting down in sort of our baby meeting rooms. So this is the focus rooms, one to two people. These solutions could even be used at home. So if you've got an executive that wants just a meeting solution in his uh, study in his office at home, we do see people do that and there is a personal mode that you can configure these in as well. So we've actually got a poly um, P15 uh, USB connected um, uh, speaker, microphone and camera solution with the G40T tablet that was set on uh, the tablet and either a Dell or Lenovo PC. That's the Windows based solution or well, the Android based solution is an X30. It's a very small unit. It's actually the same size as the P15, which is probably around 50 centimeters in length. It's quite a small unit and that will simply just sit on top or below the screen that is available to you. The next one up in the range then from a Windows based perspective, the tablet and the PC are exactly the same, but we have a Poly Studio USB, much bigger unit. It's about 80, 90 centimeters in length. It's got fantastic audio and sound quality, and it's got very uh, clever sound and audio features into it, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, if that size meeting room, you could still be using the X30 from an Android perspective, but you might start coming into the X50, which is the one that we're coming to next. So again, from a, a medium meeting room perspective, we've Windows, the same unit as before. That is a really scalable solution. But from an Android perspective, we'd be tipping over to what's called an X50. So again, this is about 80, 90 centimeters in length. It is a single box solution. So you get the tablet on the desk and this goes above or below the screen um, and people will be able to join that meeting. And then all the way at the end, we've got some really clever technology that is coming out by Poly. These solutions, so the E70, and there is actually an X70 that is coming that I believe is going to replace the G7500 down the bottom. These solutions have dual uh, 4K cameras on them that allow you to do some really clever uh, functionality with them. I think I've got a slide on in a moment, so I'll come back to. So the Microsoft Teams room solutions will generally have features similar to this, but I'm just going to focus on the poly technology at the moment. So the first technology I'm going to look at is a technology that helps you zoom in on the people inside the meeting room. So rather than constantly having a live view of the people, you're able to transition between the people that are taking. It will use AI based technology to find out who is speaking inside the room and it will then zoom in on that person. So the remote person has the best experience possible to be able to view what is going on. So you, as you can see here by the graphics in the middle, it could frame the whole group. It could frame the speaker and it could do it in conversation mode where it's tracking between the various different people in the mode. So it just means that you get that best experience looking in what's going on. If we, uh, so someone's asking about Teams room panels, I've got a slide on that in the moment, so I'll come to that in a moment. Um, the next thing that you need and arguably the most important thing, because if the image is a little bit not ideal, you can still cope as long as you've got fantastic audio. And this for me is an area that I wholeheartedly make sure you get right. So Poly, for those that don't know, is the coming together of Plantronics and Polycom. For those of you that remember, or those like me that have uh, fondly watched it since, the first uh, man on the moon, um, and what was it, one small step for man, um, that came from a Plantronics headset. This is a company that has been around for many years that is designing world-class audio systems. So that is what you're going to get in the Poly solutions. The two features I want to talk about, the first is noise block AI. And what will happen there is if there is any noise that isn't the conversation, it is rustling, it is typing, it is 
is a hoover on in the background, all of those kind of things, the noise block AI will cut that out to make sure that the people on the other end don't get that noise that is happening in the background. The other functionality is the acoustic fence. Now, what we're seeing is an increase in open meeting rooms where meeting rooms don't necessarily have, um, I just saw someone's comment, that, that's why I sound like I'm on the moon when I use Teams, I like that. Um, so the noise block uh, AI, if you have an open meeting, room, maybe with no walls, which I don't really recommend, it looks pretty, but I don't think it's the best design, potentially, make sure you get it right. Um, it will basically create a virtual barrier that you set the almost the degrees that it is going to focus on. So you almost set that to project at the meeting room table in front of you. And if someone has stood behind that um, that zone or outside that zone, you simply will not hear them. And if you go to uh, YouTube, have a look at acoustic fencing for Poly. There's even some people that are using the same headset that I'm using, which is uh, the Poly Focus UC2, doing their lawn mowing and you can still hear them. And that's because acoustic fence and noise block AI is based into this headset as well. And we'll come to that. So make sure when you're considering the solutions, it isn't just about having a great camera and great audio. It's about these features to make sure you get the best experience for the people that are joining remotely. And this was the technology I said I'd come back to in a moment. So this is the Poly E70, large meeting room. And as I said, the Poly X70, the Android based version of it is coming out very soon. Now, as you can see on it, it's got two cameras. They're two um, 4K cameras and they're set at different angles. If I hide myself from it, I think it says. So it has a 70 uh, degree narrow angle camera as well as the typical, I think it's 90 degree camera. Now, what happens is as you can see down the bottom here, with one camera, you see the wide view of the meeting room. And with the other camera, you will see the individual people that are speaking. And with technology that's coming into Microsoft Teams very shortly, you will also be able to crop individual people out so they appear in their own Teams bubble in Microsoft Teams as well. So these new cameras are very, very intelligent and further add to that uh, ability of people to feel inclusive, to feel like they are in the meeting room itself. So there was um, someone, I think it was Mark, that asked about Teams Run panels. Um, and Mark, you're, you're completely uh, right. So I think Yaling, Crestron and Logitech are the only people that I've seen uh, that support these. So a Teams Run panel will sit outside of your meeting room. It, they normally have sort of lights on either side that will show the status of the room. I think uh, we, we really like the Yaling panels. They're, they're cheap, they're affordable. All it is doing is showing what's going on inside the meeting room, allowing you to book it. So I don't think you need to pay excessively for this piece. Save your budget for the camera, speakers and microphone. But ultimately on the, the A-Link ones, if there is a Teams meeting in place, it will glow purple for Teams. You can change that to red if you prefer. It will show the meetings going on. It will show you able to book it. In the future, it's looking to add functionality so you check into the room. And if you don't check into the room, it will make the room available after a predefined uh, amount of time. So um, they're not available from all the vendors at the moment, and you don't need to match the Teams panel to the Teams meeting room technology. So outside the meeting room, we do generally recommend the Yaling panel, and inside the room, you are able to have uh, a poly system or whatever that may be. So the check-in, as Mark said there, it's a great feature. It's a problem we've had with a number of customers uh, where someone has booked a meeting or a reoccurring meeting, decided not to go into the office that day, and it's just then simply not available. So that check-in feature is coming very soon, I believe, and you will just make sure you click the check-in button on the meeting room, or it can free that meeting room up for you. So have a look at these. They are limited functionality. There are other solutions out there. We do offer team uh, panels that will work with teams from other vendors. The benefit to me is these are all managed by the Teams admin console. It's that native experience. And if you can get away with it, I personally would recommend a Teams panel over than a third party panel. There are some people that need the ability to maybe book um, uh, a meal or stationery for the room for the panels to be able to call to get support and these other things. If you do need those features, then we do have an alternative solution that works with Microsoft Teams. But I'd urge you only to look at it if it's something that you really need. 
The other thing that you can look at is certain uh, meeting rooms, you will want to look at um, different audio technologies that may be uh, available in the room, maybe to make sure the microphones are just covering all of the area, um, or maybe that you go with a camera only solution. So you're going to pick a PC, a camera and a microphone separately. Um, so typically we see the Poly Trio C60. It's kind of that spider phone. It's kind of what Polycom were, were known for back in the day. It is fully Microsoft Teams compliant. You can manage the meeting, etc on the little screen there um, and it has fantastic audio pickup in an extremely large meeting room you may need a custom design solution that has in ceiling microphone speakers and things like that and you'll be looking for a digital signal uh, signal process from the likes of Shure by Ample QSC so ultimately there's a variety of different solutions. Your small, medium and large rooms, you'll be able to pick something off the shelf that can be put together very simply, very easily. If you've got an extra large room, it will need to be custom designed. And then we look to make sure that we use uh, solutions that are certified uh, for Microsoft Teams. So one thing I just wanted to point out, lots of people when they get to this stage spend a lot of money on the in-meeting room technology. But the users that are still working from home are shouting at their laptop. You're looking up their nose at the laptop camera that is going, uh, pointing up at their face. It is really important that for that inclusivity, you make sure that you, and that's a good point there by Mark, make sure you don't use ceiling microphones where you have noisy aircon. That is a really good point. There's something like the noise block AI may be able to cut out some of that, but it's 100% about looking at that room, looking at the design, something on the table would probably work better um, in, in those uh, scenarios. Back to my point about personal devices, make sure that you look at those people, especially those people that are remote and very rarely going to come into the office to make sure they have the right technology. So something like the headset I'm wearing now, which has active noise cancelling, so I can't hear um, the kids running around out the back. You can't hear them because it's got the noise block, uh, the acoustic fencing. Um, and hopefully I've got good audio and good sound uh, from that perspective. Um, in the middle, we've got the Poly P15, which I've actually got here uh, in front of me, which is the all-in-one USB bar. So if I wanted to do this as more of a conference call, you've got uh, the audio coming out of very high quality speakers. I've actually got four microphones that are built into it, and I have a, a 4K camera that can zoom in on me. So even if I was to stand up and walk around, you'd still be able to see me presenting. So that is a fantastic technology as well. And then finally, this Poly P21 and Dell do have similar solutions. So this is a USB connected monitor. If you are going to have a focus space inside the office, these could work, maybe a hot desk. This uh, solution has a camera, speakers and microphone, plus a USB port to plug your headset dongle into. But most importantly, either side of the screen, it's got light. So if you're in a kind of smaller huddle space and you're trying to join a call, you don't look all dark or in shadow. It is able to project a nice warm light towards you so you look the best possible when you join that meeting room. So all I would urge you to do is just consider both sides of the meeting, the meeting room and your employees that work from home. The kind of the tech that you use to join meetings, especially where you're meeting customers, is the new equivalent of suited and booted. When we used to go out and visit customers, you'd make sure you polish your shoes, maybe got your best tie on and things like that. Today it's can you be seen, can you be heard, can you look professional and that's what these technologies do. Now, as we come towards the end, there's just a couple uh, more bits that I want to cover. And the first thing is looking at those displays. So as I mentioned earlier, if it's a traditional meeting room, you probably don't need a touch screen um, uh, there. Um, you can use a standard screen, go as big as you can in terms of the room or go for a dual screen solution if that will work for you. If it's a collaboration space where you're going to be up on your feet, you want to be sharing ideas, you want to be whiteboarding something or mind mapping something, have a look at the touch screens of available. Touchscreens work with both the Windows and Android based solutions, but the Android based solutions were kind of designed to work with uh, the touchscreens, so they work really effectively with them. Even so, I think you can um, you can forego the tablet on the desk if you re uh, really wanted to. Um, we really like the Dell, so Dell make um, uh, a couple of monitors there, the 65 and 75 inch. We've got the uh, 75 inch in our meeting space um, and you can use that then with Microsoft Whiteboard to be able to whiteboard the meeting. Now where we are today 
if you want to use whiteboard in a Microsoft Teams room, you have to get somebody else in the meeting that is on a device to start the meeting room, uh, to start the whiteboard. That's because the, that will be saved into their OneDrive effectively where the, uh, the whiteboard is. Now, the ability to start the whiteboard from the meeting room is coming, um, but it's not there today. So all you simply do is start the meeting. Um, me personally, I will add my device in a muted mode, so a co-device mode. Uh, I start the whiteboard, I jump up, grab the pen, and I'll draw all over it. If one of my colleagues is sat at home and he's got his Microsoft Surface or Dell uh, device, he can grab his pen as well and we can collaborate in real time. One of the things that you do need to consider is the position of the camera. As I mentioned before, you don't want it at um, crotch height because again, uh, the person at the other end isn't gonna have the most enjoyable experience. Uh, you'll want to make sure the camera is probably above the screen or set off to the screen. So as you're whiteboarding, you can talk to the camera as if you're talking to that person to make sure that they're inclusive. So just get your design right uh, from that perspective. If there are any other questions around displays and things like that, let me know. The other thing that I would make sure that you look at is make sure you consider commercial displays rather than consumer televisions. Consumer televisions aren't designed to be on from 9 to 5.30. Um, they have different technologies like the HDMI input might change regularly. They might have updates coming down for apps that are deployed on them go for a commercial display that is designed to be used for meeting rooms. Uh, people like Dell, like NEC, make very good displays um, and we can help you uh, with the relevant uh, options for each of your different personas of meeting rooms. So I think we're coming to the end of what I uh, had put together today. I'm more than happy to uh, answer any questions. Um, if anybody has any specific questions, then please let me know. So one of the things that we're doing at Computer World, as we specialize in Microsoft modern working uh, technologies, we're able to offer you a Microsoft Teams room workshop. In that workshop, we will discuss your needs. What is it you're looking to achieve? What are the personas inside your organization and how are they laid out? Indeed, if you have noisy uh, air conditioning, let's make sure that we work around that. We're able to do an art of the possible demonstration where you can see the technology in action. If you uh, are looking to do a number of rooms, we could probably even take you down to the Poly Experience Centre down um, in the Gherkin in London to see all the technology in action. Alternatively, we have some customers with this technology deployed really well in the Southwest as well, if you'd like to see the technology a bit more locally. Um, we can review all the technology options that are available to you and create a plan with what that looks like. Ultimately, that may, will mean that you have the idea as to which type of room technology, what the likely cost would be, and what the installation con uh, considerations would be. If this is something that would be of interest to you, please speak to your Computer World account manager or free, feel free to email me as well, barryc at computerworld.co.uk. There's no cost for this. This is something that we're just doing to help educate you, to help you uh, understand the technology a little bit better. So that's what I've got today on Microsoft Teams Rooms. I hope you found that useful. I hope you have found it informative, not only about the technology, but some of the things that you really should be considering around your Microsoft Teams Rooms. Um, we'll stop the recording here, but if anyone has any additional questions or anything else like that, please let me know. We're really happy to help you. We also do offer other solutions around Microsoft um, 365 adoption and training. We have our Adopt 365 platform that uh, may be useful to you if you want to get your team up to speed with the knowledge. Where do I save my files is a common question. Is it OneDrive or is it SharePoint? What is the relation between SharePoint and Microsoft Teams? Or maybe you're from the technical side and you want to look at modern management and autopilot. These aren't just things we dabble in. These are things that we specialize in. We've got really close relationships with Microsoft, so we're happy to find out the best ways that we can support you, any funding that might be available. So thank you ever so much for joining. As I say, I will stay behind now just to answer any questions but thank you for joining.